Just off a winding road west of the Andes in Chile is a wealthy enclave known as Vitacura. It's Santiago's most affluent neighborhood. In fact, they call it Sanhattan. Isn't that cute? A two bedroom here will run you just under a million. If you're raising a family, good chance you're sending them to one of its elite private schools. Unlike Manhattan, it's not accessible by metro. It's not crowded and not the sort of place you'd expect for a major outbreak. And yet, that's exactly what happened. Why am I talking about this? Well, Chile's first documented super spreader event of the coronavirus pandemic occurred at the Vitacura Private School back in March. And the key takeaway, 40% of infected students were asymptomatic. They contributed to a fast moving contagion that would soon grip the entire country. Now, as schools reopen across the globe, Vitacura has become an important case study in just how easily and silently children can transmit the disease. Taken together with data collected by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in both the United States and China, there is growing evidence to suggest that kids are just as likely to spread the virus as adults, even though the symptoms are usually more mild. Babies and toddlers may be the exception when it comes to symptoms. But remember, this is a novel coronavirus, novel meaning new. While scientists race toward a vaccine, researchers are struggling to offer lasting guidance. And so parents and school administrators are left to piece together information about the safety of their schools. Countries like Norway and Denmark have authorities sending young students back in late spring without a significant rise in caseload. Their use of masks, limited class size, and social distancing were all enforced. But that same study cautioned against drawing too many conclusions, citing a lack of data. Meanwhile, in places like Israel, you've seen the dangers of moving too fast. Just two weeks after reopening, major new outbreaks prompted Israeli authorities to close dozens of schools. In South Korea, among the world's few coronavirus success stories, authorities shuttered schools amid threats of a resurgence. Others like Japan have moved forward, allowing some primary and secondary students to return with mandatory face masks and daily temperature checks. But what about universities? 20 million college students are staring down uncertainty about campus life as the semester gets underway. In Alabama, despite masks and social distancing, University of Alabama President Stuart Bell had this to say just five days after reopening his school when more than 500 new coronavirus cases emerged. Although our initial reentry test was encouraging, the rise in COVID cases that we've seen in recent days is unacceptable and if unchecked, threatens our ability to complete the semester on campus. Remember, this is an economic story as much as it is a health story. Empty dorms, vacant sports stadiums, real questions about endowments and those paying full tuition. University coffers have for decades relied on full price students from overseas. Chinese students account for roughly one third of all money spent by international students in the US. Lockdowns and travel restrictions are squeezing that revenue, not to mention the challenges in US-China relations. Smaller schools may be forced to close, others forced to invest big in technology. Education tech expenditures are forecast to swell by 12% this year and next, reaching 325 billion by the year 2025. Zoom is just the beginning. And that could be the silver lining in all this, a long overdue tech-inspired disruption challenging conventional wisdom about education at a time when the future of schools is uncertain.